Hello, and welcome to another session of Digital Slide Review and Sign Out. I'm Dr. Lewis Hassel, and I'm coming to you from the University of Oklahoma Health Sciences Center, uh, our campus in Oklahoma City, uh, home of the uh, NIH designated Cancer Center uh, of Oklahoma, the Stevenson Cancer Center. Uh, our case today comes from the uh, realm of GI pathology again. Uh, this is a 35-year-old who is a rather avid outdoorsman, um, and over the past several months had had uh, some degree of chronic diarrhea, uh, resulting in even a little bit of weight loss. So the uh, uh, internist referred him to gastroenterology, and he underwent an upper uh, endoscopy, as well as uh, various other uh, modalities of testing. And these are his uh, biopsy samples. Uh, which you can see at low power represent the uh, typical fragmented uh, duodenal biopsies. But at low, at low magnification, we look to, to first see if there's any architectural abnormalities. Uh, we don't see uh, too much in the way of villus blunting. We don't see any mass lesions. We don't see any evidence of neoplastic infiltration. There are uh, certainly a number of lymphocytes uh, in the lamina propria. Uh, but in the duodenum, that can be uh, fairly normal. Um, and so we're sort of presented with a biopsy where uh, we might begin to think uh, that this is a normal duodenal mucosa and uh, sign it out as such and go on to the next case. However, I've just been uh, showing this to you at scanning magnification. Uh, and if your eyes are not accustomed to uh, things, uh, you might miss uh, a few little clues, like these little things right here, uh, out in the lumen, uh, out in the bowel lumen. Uh, they can look just like uh, fecal debris um, and therefore easily be passed over uh, as uh, of insignificance. Uh, here's another one here um, in these uh, small bowel biopsies. Um, sometimes if you uh, go to uh, high magnification, uh, you'll be able to see these uh, little uh, uh, things sort of sitting right on the top of the uh, epithelium in some areas. So here's more out in the lumen. Um, but sometimes they're right attached to the surface of the villus. And maybe we can see one of those here. Um, well, uh, let's see. I'll try one more area here. Here we see more of them up here. Um, and maybe that's one right there, just a little darker area along the surface of the uh, uh, crypt epithelium. <clears throat> well, I think uh, this case uh, raises the question of what do we think about uh, when we're looking at what looks to be a normal small bowel biopsy? Um, certainly age group and setting uh, make uh, a big difference in terms of what we may be thinking about. Uh, early or mild inflammatory disease, uh, whether that's uh, Crohn's disease or uh, other uh, inflammatory diseases. Uh, sometimes, and particularly in children, there may be some subtle metabolic disease, uh, which uh, can uh, look relatively normal. Uh, some of the uh, uh, disorders of uh, glycogen metabolism and other sorts of things, uh, tufting uh, enteropathy and things of that sort. Uh, and then uh, perhaps most importantly are the uh, somewhat occult infectious diseases. Now, several of these are diseases that you ordinarily would not see uh, unless you had a history of uh, other immune deficiencies such as HIV infection, like cryptosporidia and microsporidia, much more common in patients with uh, immunodeficiency due to uh, HIV. Uh, similarly, atypical mycobacteria oftentimes will have some sort of a vaguely granulomatous inflammation. Whipple's disease will usually have some sort of lamina propria type of um, expansion and infiltration by uh, uh, histiocytes containing the bacteria. Uh, but Giardia uh, is uh, among all of these the perhaps most not notorious for uh, masquerading as normal uh, because it tends to hide uh, amongst the fecal debris in the stream uh, coming through the bowel. So uh, we'll take a look here at another case, another slide, um, and let you see 
how very normal this can look at low magnification. Uh, as we uh, look a little bit further, well, yeah, then again, we see these little uh, sort of pyramidal uh, appearing uh, lesions, organisms uh, in the lumen. Um, and there may be a few scattered around and we may sort of wonder, but here again, we see them right up along the brush border uh, laying on that surface epithelium um, and uh, making their, uh, their themselves uh, felt in that manner. Um, Giardia is, uh, as we know, a uh, uh, insisting parasite. Um, the uh, cysts pass through the stool and contaminate uh, water sources or uh, through fecal contamination can, may contaminate other uh, food items and then are ingested uh, and uh, the exgestation takes place in the stomach uh, or upper GI tract and they will tend to inhabit the small bowel, uh, divide and proliferate in that location uh, until ultimately they pass out through the stool in an insisted form. They are non-invasive, but their lectin-based attachment to the surface epithelium interferes with the absorption. Um, and there they will, uh, in effect, down-regulate down Claudin-1 and increase apoptosis, uh, therefore potentially increasing turnover. Um, certainly, uh, small bowel biopsy is not the most common way to diagnose this lesion. Much more commonly, it's uh, detected in stool samples. Uh, but if they're um, uh, moderate in number or if the uh, clinician has failed to uh, order that test, uh, the endoscopy, biopsy, and the pathologist will be the way to make the diagnosis. Of course, this is not an exclusively human parasite. And in fact, uh, over here is the more common uh, form of transmission, which is between various uh, sorts of uh, animals, uh, sheep, deer, uh, and others being amongst the most notorious. Uh, and hence our uh, patient's uh, avid outdoorsman uh, may have exposed him to some mountain waters uh, containing uh, cysts that were excreted by mountain goats or deer uh, or other uh, ungulates uh, on the uh, uh, mountain ranges. Just to sort of practice a little bit, let's uh, do one more slide here. Uh, again, we see fairly normal appearing villus pattern, nice elongated ones, no inflammation, no mass. Um, and as we come down here uh, to higher magnification, there they are, little clumps of slightly purple uh, organisms uh, hanging out in between the villi. And here we can see them nicely attached onto the surface uh, of the uh, enterocytes um, and uh, uh, in that manner interfering with, uh, here we see an even better view of them. And this is perhaps the one time you can almost see their uh, characteristic morphology with the dual nuclei and so forth. But usually you're not going to see the nuclear features, the uh, flagelli and so forth. Uh, that are uh, typically seen in other settings, uh, but seeing them all along here, along these surfaces, should allow you to make that diagnosis. So uh, in the hopes that uh, you won't pass another uh, normal uh, biopsy without looking for uh, uh, Giardia, that uh, is our diagnosis for today. Uh, Giardiasis, probably acquired through contaminated water uh, in this avid outdoorsman and resulting in uh, rather significant diarrhea, uh, and potentially weight loss and malabsorption. Well, thanks for joining us. If you like this, please uh, comment, uh, subscribe, uh, so you won't miss future videos and uh, share it. Uh, certainly you must have some colleagues who uh, maybe need to be reminded about this uh, feature in uh, so-called normal biopsies as well. Uh, so until next time, thanks so much for joining me.